So it's like you and I would use a highlighter pen. It's a mind in focus at a particular moment in crucial time that allows us to really see Washington as, as a critical leader. Welcome to the Secrets of Washington's Archives. In celebration of the 10th anniversary of the George Washington Presidential Library, we're bringing you up close and personal with the treasures from his library. Today, we're talking about one of the most important books of Washington's presidency, his own copy of the Acts of Congress. Not only does this book contain Washington's personal copy of the Constitution, but it also holds his notes on what it means to be president. Joining me today to talk about this significant book is Dr. Douglas Bradburn. CEO and president of Mount Vernon, as well as the founding director of the George Washington Presidential Library. Boy, you've got one of the treasures of the collections right here. Yes, we should mention that what we are filming today is a facsimile. Even I am not allowed to touch that book. <laughs> so what is the Acts of Congress? Yeah, the Acts of Congress is an odd name for it. It's on the binding. It's called the Acts of Congress. Essentially, it is the a uh, collection of all the laws passed by the first session of the first Congress under the Constitution of the United States with a copy of the Constitution at the beginning. So, you know, Washington's inaugurated president in April of 1789. Congress meets in March of 1789, so they're there first. They have to take the Constitution, which is just a piece of paper, and turn it into a government. So they start passing the laws, which creates the executive branch, they create the judiciary branch, they pass the first tax laws. And of course, at the end of that, they also passed the resolutions that we come to know as the Bill of Rights. Um, after that session ended in September, uh, they you know, brought all their laws to be printed. Washington acquired seven books for his executive team as the executive branch. And this one is his actual copy. And it says President of the United States in the beautiful leather binding. It has his book plate in it. Uh, it was his own copy of those first laws under the Constitution. And what makes his copy so special and unique? Yeah, well, you know, he's creating this office of the presidency, which is a new thing in, in the world, really. I mean, how do you have a head of state uh, that's elected and, you know, what kind of powers are they going to have? But what makes this one particularly special is, is the context in which he, he rereads it and he, he writes a little bit in the Constitution that's inside it. Yeah, so let's set the stage a little bit. So Washington receives this copy of the book. Congress is coming back for its second session in January of, of 1790. Uh, and I believe that's when he rereads this book. They're coming back. He wants to see what they did in the last session. He'd already been president for 10 months. But what's great is he's preparing for his uh, State of the Union address. He sits down and he reads the Constitution. And he marks it up in the margins, in those areas where the president has powers. So the Article 1, as you know, is all about the legislative branch and lays out powers enumerated to Congress in those sections in which those powers are mingled with the executive branch, the veto power, the treaty-making power. Washington puts these precise little brackets in pencil and writes, President, President. So it's like this is his responsibility. Those are his job description. It gets really exciting in Article 2, which is all about the executive branch. It says the, president, or the executive shall be in the President of the United States. Next to that, he writes President. It's like, okay, this is his whole deal. It gets down to a section where it says he shall have power, lists the President, and he writes President Powers. And then below that, it lays out that he shall take care of the laws be faithfully executed. He writes Required. And what I find so interesting about this in particular is that unlike some of the other founding fathers, Washington did not often write in his yes, books. Yeah. So the fact that he is writing in this one at such a crucial yeah. moment tells us just how seriously he was taking his duties at the time. That's a great point, Anne. I mean, you know, he's binding himself to the rule of law. Uh, but, you know, for me, it's the context of the moment, too. I mean, he writes a letter uh, very close in time to this to Catherine Macaulay Graham, the great English Whig historian. Um, who had visited him and Martha Washington here at Mount Vernon in the 1780s. Uh, and, and he writes about the challenges they'd been under to create this constitution. He, he talks about it was the last great experiment in human happiness under civil society. Much was to be done by firmness, much by conciliation, much by prudence. It was to be a government of laws as well as accommodation. And he says, I walk on untrodden ground. And to paraphrase, everything I do uh, is subject to two interpretations, and everything I do is creating a precedent. So he's thinking about 
the precedence that he's creating as he's focusing in and, and, and his mind in this in this document. So that really, I think, brings the power of the book and his reading and his moment together. It's an incredible specimen of America's greatest leader's mind at work in the moment when he's creating the office of the presidency. And it's so interesting, too, that this happens right at the beginning of his presidency. He the other thing about the, the Constitution and the presidency in Washington is so critical to understand you know, Article 1 limits the powers of Congress. They're enumerated. There's powers retained by the states. Article 3 lays out the judiciary branch. It's limited in what federal law can do. Uh, it hasn't even been designed yet by Congress, and it's going to be controlled. But the executive branch is quite expansive. I mean, he's there 365 days a year, and the powers are somewhat vague and have the potential to be abused. And, of course, famously... When these, you know, these former revolutionaries who overthrown a monarchy, the framers were asked, why did you create such a powerful executive branch? He said, well, we might have restrained it more if we hadn't known that the first president would be George Washington. So whatever restraint goes into that office uh, from its founding comes from the, the attitude and perspective of Washington. And what can we today learn from the legacy of Washington and his presidency? Yeah, I mean, I think there's lessons... A great lessons to learn. I think that quote from Catherine Macaulay Graham, sometimes firmness, sometimes conciliation, sometimes prudence. Leadership is an art. The question is when to be firm, when to be prudent, when to conciliate. And so I think those lessons are still there to be learned. Um, and, and there's always more to be learned about than extraordinary eight years. If you want to learn more about George Washington's presidency, the first Congress, and about this copy of the Acts of Congress, be sure to check out our podcast companion, also titled The Secrets of Washington's Archives, available wherever you download your favorite podcasts. Go to georgewashingtonpodcast.com to learn more.